This Ridleyo is sponsored by Freekeen.com. Social Security Prevention Office. Or it's periphery. Keen, New Hampshire. 2019. 22 May. Mm. A message for the attention of any and all real touring endeavors imagining themselves beneficial to society <clears throat> in their consort with and providing some space to am I? <clears throat> uh, providing some space to uh, the federal government and uh, hazardous detention camps for the children of those who visit these modest appearing locations are significant now this modest appearing location is significant uh, profoundly so though perhaps in a counterintuitively local way while examining the invisibly bleeding sores of government center which dot the un the otherwise comely map of Keene or largely comely roughly nine could readily be located which were deserving a practically of an oppositional visit which they will receive and are receiving of these three or uh, one-third showed to be of imperial a uh, commonly misnamed federal origin I almost began wondering for a moment would it be possible to devise speeches for so many outposts of the same institution in the same town but it was only a moment and unhappily brief for the numbers of grievances are vast and a lifetime entire <clears throat> of such speeches against them could be penned the penman expiring long before all had been uh, recounted the fact that so many of the government the governmental uh, governmental offices in this small local area this small local area are of Washington origin is expressive of the deep penetration into our lives which has been affected from the deadly and parasitical recesses of that Colombian district its symbols and warnings appear to be ne nearly everywhere and are surely in more places <laughs> than we imagine this one though humble and uh, unassuming on its exterior imagines itself so special and powerful that they may it may treat itself to privileges and prohibitions that do not apply at all to the uh, to the other perhaps 99.7 percentages of the New Hampshire landmass before entering its rented territory you must strip yourself of any rangeable means of self-defense people imagine and in fact in fact are told they must underwrite all its works submit to its forfeits of paycheck and if all goes well and no collapses occur in the collapsing system hope to receive the money back you might get it back if the system does not collapse first collapse collapse first what are the appropriate measures uh, that uh, a landlord bent upon doing the right thing might consider in place of the current consortment with an imperial seat that waxes seemingly or wages seemingly unending wars mm. eh. seemingly unending wars uh, wars of conquest and uh, turns American rivers orange with toxins the abortion or non-renewal of leases spring to mind as obvious expedients but such lawful and reasonable steps 
could easily result in the displeased government's sudden coincidental discovery of some harmless, unintentional felony on the part of the lessor. Lessor, lessor. <clears throat> Mm. their financial ruin, or perhaps the taking of their very person into the, red, into the labyrinths of confinement and of confusion over where one is supposed to stand. And, uh, the, labyrinth, the labyrinth of a confinement, <coughs> the labyrinth of confinement, uh, of which, uh, one, of the lab one of the labyrinths of confinement, of which there are many the dangers and restrictions upon action make well our point for us. Perhaps the most we can ask of those who are entangled uh, into contracts or financial bondages with <coughs> Washington is, um, <coughs> is this. Devise a way to avoid deepening your ties to it. And please, generate no more. New Hampshire, where it is difficult for their murderous institution to find housing for its uh, wasteful works. And New Hampshire, which was like that, would become a well-publicized destination for the productive. But if you are afraid to do even that, then perhaps we might lower our expectations even further and timidly suggest only a reduction in your part in the active efforts to solicit in a manner which makes you complicit. Cheshire Superior Court, 22 May 2019. Winston Ridley reporting in. Winston. <clears throat> ah, YouTube records a lamentable event, though probably not the most lamentable, perpetrated upon this spot by the ministers and agents um, defending this institution. A reminder of the inappropriate limits which the government of this empire attempts to impose upon the right of free expression and free access to public facilities which are, it appears, public only in their funding. In the twelfth month of 2011, officers of this ministry, or at least the sheriff himself, confronted a small group of activists, one of whom had been summoned there, here, while the remainder were present to exercise without menace the rights of free expression. Their breach was a horrific exploit of uh, attempting to Sing to the bureaucrats. Ah, uh, mm, mm. bureaucrats. The uh, sing to the bureaucrats. The uh, in the in the parking lot, uh, which is uh, what you now see behind me. It was at the time a parking lot, and as government has wanted to do, it has grown into a new facility for menacing the people. <coughs> uh, in any event, uh, zero in the parking lot, uh, in the parking lot, deputies plus the uh, then ruling sheriff appeared in 2011, uh, proceeded to dismiss the endeavor as harassment and ban the crooners from the grounds under penalty of arrest. What fragile ears are these functionaries uh, must, uh, these functionaries of state must suffer uh, to require the intervention of armed officialdom, numbering not less than five gunmen. But odious fears and backward glancing they must practice at all times to be so, uh, so anxious as a few young people. Uh, a few, uh, 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 there is a, there is an issue with the mechanism. Winston is on the, on the case. 
<laughs> but is not a mechanic. Ah, <clears throat> ear issue, <laughs> a breath, a horse spies, fragile ears, functionaries. Uh, yes, with fragile ears, these functionaries must suffer uh, to require the intervention of armed officials to know not know person us and five gunmen. Oh, what odious fears and back, yes, what odious fears and backward glancing. They must practice at all times to be so anxious of a few young people endeavoring to inform the public of its, uh, of its birthrights mm. uh, or perhaps tossing out a few, uh, a few notes of Simon Condemnable uh, crooning ooh, ooh, crooning <laughs> ooh, hold me <laughs> ah, <coughs> uh, what moaners and damp blankets must in inhabit this costly uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> growing like a pathogen edifice. Immeasurably craven and contemptible must be their snowflakery of temperament. <coughs> you, may, uh, you may view the video of this encounter yourself if you choose. And now nearing, uh, as it is, uh, an acceptable uh, 200 uh, thousands of, of, of views. Simply search for the keywords Cheshire uh, Sheriff's Singing or avail yourself of the link in the description below. Mm. Uh, look. Uh, in, the, in the long, uh, wretched catalogue of government crime, uh, this deed has been many times surpassed. Uh, uh, performing the acts and threats as were performed here does not perform, the, does not transform uh, the perpetrators into uh, mustachioed Soviet dictators. But even if we were to imagine this edifice were uh, uh, the source of only uh, humanitarian and uh, an anti anti uh, anti violence maneuvers, free of all hidden corruptions and painful designs. It would, nevertheless, be a damaging burden upon all around it. For even if you countenance, as some countenance, the penalties for singing, <laughs> and the prohibitions against uh, entering a public property, are you certain that you also affirm the practice of seizing from you, as this institution does, a portion of your sustenance each year, in order to underwrite this enforcement. And if you approve of that seizure and of your own weakening, what have you say? Uh, what have you to? Uh, what have you to say of the same or proportionate seizures levied against your most cherished kinsmen and neighbors, as they are being levied? Well, there's surely among them at least one who laments, as I do, the uh, confiscatory process of taxation, uh, the, uh, the intimidation of those who would merely enter a government parking lot and there exercise those constitutionally enshrined civic liberties for which so many have hemorrhaged and which so few can disparage. Hmm. It has been said, and perhaps said well, Kurdistan is a faraway country of which we know little. And certainly most Americans know very little of the grave sacrifices, the heroic battles, and the even more heroic restraint, the democratic and largely peaceable aspirations of this tortured yet generally moderate nation as yet unrecognized by the great powers. Surely they know only the most limited details of the long unwavering, seemingly unwaverable loyalty and steadfastness this long persecuted people have shown 
of war their American allies, not only its government, but its people, and the face of even the wickedest betrayals, even the most deadly abuses, but distant be it from any of us to acknowledge our debt of gratitude to them whose struggle is so much less tainted than our own if it can be said that the American government's struggles are our own riven and sundered into three parts by the cruel and unthinking hand or hands of the Versailles powers or perhaps even those longer dead subjected to bombardments of deadly gas and the hungry hand of dictators the vicious privations of the Islamic State and the rapacious absorption by the Iraqi one. These long-suffering but patient peoples have not resorted to the dubious expedience of large-scale atrocity or fanatical rule but have borne themselves with a dignity which would be alien to most in this bloated empire of bloated people barely half of whom even seem able to tolerate the presence of an undocumented helper this deprived yet poised race now faces the fate of a modern Czechoslovakia a modern Munich and an invasion into their realms of the most naked kind by an autocratic Turkish regime of genocidal parentage unreconstructed at least in part since the days almost within living memory of the killing fields at Armenia and the prisoner killing squads at Gallipoli and what happens to the solid Turkish woman of conscience who says as much on a sign at Ankara or Istanbul what happens even if she gathers her friends for a demonstration against the closing of a park what horrors or tragedies seem to await the bystanding targets of the sick man's buffer zone if it even remains such and does not result in an incorporation or further incursion as did the Czechoslovak debacle of 1939 and 38. It falls to us who believe in freedom, uh, but not freedom through taxation, to propose solutions. And now that the United States government has done arguably the right thing at the wrong time and perhaps in the wrong place withdrawing its token force of warriors and green lighting its cruel and long remembered ally long remembered as it is in tales of terror throughout the Balkans throughout the Arab lands before I may suggest your course of action, I must recount my own. It is not memorable, and it will little change the world, but it is more than nothing. 
I have volunteered to assist the Curtis Project, though not in an unlimited manner. I have recognized on behalf of my organization in hexit.com the independence of Kurdistan and I urge you uh, to do the same uh, they are our brothers in secession if like us you consistently favor this course for all who wish it they are our brothers uh, generally speaking in tolerance relatively speaking and the constraints though imperfect of democratic rule imagine what would occur if a cross-section of political and private organizations around this country around its empire were to unilaterally recognize the independence of this great yet small potentate or a, a principality perhaps we should say perhaps we should not what if government ministers and warriors of this empire were to resign their sordid positions and make themselves available in some manner for the defense or assistance of Kurdistan and the effect of even one doing so could be magnetical. There are the more obvious options of demonstration at a Turkish consulate. There is surely one near each of us. And there is the prospect of monetary humanitarian aid. And the important matter is to do more than nothing. As the Mahatma said what you do will be insignificant but it is very important that you do it she joined the libertarian migrating free state project around 2005 moved to new hampshire in 2006 roughly ran for local office in Keene around 2007 co-hosted the radio program Free Talk Live throughout and died roughly 72 hours ago. This according to a funer funeral home page, much of it according to a funeral home page in Peterborough, New Hampshire. It says we lost her on July 21st and that she was in New York when she died. It says she died suddenly it does not list an illness. Julia was possibly best known or maybe second best known for running for in 2007 uh, as I mentioned before and what I didn't mention was that she promised if she won the election she'd return her salary uh, for the position to taxpayers. Instead of winning her uh, friends in the government this earned her threats from the Attorney General's office they said she wasn't allowed to say that. She said it was the worst experience of her life running for that position, but in fleshing the authorities out and making them look like what they were in the papers, she took a hit for the pro freedom team that I'll always appreciate. There are a couple of Facebook posts on this that I've seen. Uh, some of them are up close to 100 comments now. So she will also uh, not be forgotten. More details will probably appear in the comment section and in the video description below. Julia Miranda, my appreciated ally for so many years in freedom. Rest in peace. Boys, girls, and assorted malcontents, I wanted to update you on uh, something that's going on. Uh, apparently, a state investigator uh, showed up at my residence in Winchester, New Hampshire. He was reportedly looking for me. 
Uh, I'm uh, recording this on August 2nd, 2019, and apparently he showed up either on July 31st or August 1st of 2019. Uh, I wasn't there. I'm visiting Colorado. I guess he he must have shown up about two weeks after I left town on this vac uh, this vacation to Colorado. Oh, you might refer to it as a more of a humanitarian mission. My uh, presence was requested here by my parents because my uh, mother is in ill health. They thought my uh, presence here might help them. Uh, my initial best guess was that this would this uh, this visit had something to do with a series of videos I shot uh, about my registration process when I first uh, moved to Winchester, first voted there. This would have <clears throat> this would have been uh, November of 2018. If you click the video description or if you look at the video description below, I will plan to post a link to that video. But there's other videos that I shot you know at the polling location while I was there that day it was kind of interesting because uh, you know there were two people that either freaked out about me filming or they tried to restrict me from filming or <laughs> just watch the video uh, but after that it occurred to me I re remembered that okay so when you when you register to vote in New Hampshire there is a if you don't have all the paperwork they want uh, uh, you know or, or whatnot or some kind of uh, proof of residency, then you have the option of filling out this sort of this sworn affidavit that you live where you live and that it matches your registration. I didn't have like a utility bill or anything like that with me, so I filled out the, the affidavit. And if I recall, and I think I have a copy of it all, all the paperwork, um, the, the affidavit says something along the lines of, uh, and when you sign it, you, you may be investigated later if you didn't provide you know some kind of evidence there on the spot that you live in Winchester that sort of thing so I actually did think well, that's conceivable that I'll get a visit or something like that uh, then I kinda of forgot about it but that may be all they're doing is just following up with people that filled out the affidavit uh, to make sure they're not voting for the wrong place or voting twice or whatnot you may have noticed me doing something different lately in the form of not being noticed. <laughs> if you noticed me at all. And it appears uh, that there is a desire to keep me from being noticed. Uh, in mid-September uh, 2019 this year, uh, just a week or two ago, I did an ambush interview of a, f a fairly high-ranking Obama official, his uh, ambassador to Russia. Normally I would expect something like that to be at about a thousand hits <clears throat> after about a day, maybe two. Uh, last I checked, two weeks later, it's, uh, it's at roughly 300 hits. I went to a defense contractor meeting about three weeks ago. People lost their minds because I was there with a camera and ejected me. That was fairly dramatic. It should be at about seven or eight thousand hits by now. That's it more like nine hundred. So apparently the uh, the YouTube hammer, so long expected, having fallen out on Alex Jones, having fallen on so many different channels that uh, were demonetized last year, roughly, uh, that hammer's fallen on me. And I can barely even tell you about it because barely any of you get to see these videos anymore. You almost have to go out of your way to watch them now. Fortunately, there is, I guess, a New Hampshire-based organization called uh, Library.com, spelled L-B-R-Y dot com, that is having a go at displacing YouTube in some form or fashion. The idea is that you can upload your videos there, or you can have them duplicated from YouTube to Library. Having downloaded the app, it works fine. You find a lot of videos. Uh, it seems like they're getting some traffic. It gives you a small amount of cryptocurrency, which you can use to budget various things you do on the channel, like watching premium videos. Many of you may not know this, but this is not the first time that my channel has taken a, a big hit in views. Uh, around 2013, uh, I was, I was, you know, getting about 8,000 views a day on the channel, and one day later, uh, I was getting 3,000. 
it was just like the uh, the number of hits just dropped off a cliff, and it never recovered. And I I wasn't changing in 2013. I didn't change much, but uh, I guess YouTube did. Add that to the uh, the almost uh, abusive use of advertising interruptions. You know, to the average video that a person has to watch. Uh, I mean, it's bad enough if, like, if you were watching TV and a, and an advertisement came on. Well, it would go and then it would stop and you would just continue what you were doing while the advertisement was running. But with YouTube, it's like they demand that you come back to the channel and click a bunch of stuff to stop the ad in order to be able to continue watching whatever you were watching. Now, what would what that have been like if TV in the 80s had demanded that you come over to it and do stuff in order for the ad to stop? As, as bad as things were back then, YouTube's current approach would have made it even worse. So it was a it was a great source of uh, usefulness for me back in the 2009 era to be able to go to Meta, Meta Cafe and automatically, you know, dump my YouTube videos there, uh, copy them for redundancy. They sort of stopped offering that service, I guess, but. It looks like library is offering it now. Whatever their faults or limitations, it looks like they really are quite a bit different from YouTube in a lot of ways, offering a lot of different options that YouTube didn't. So I'm really rooting for them. I have some options at DTube. The amount of anger and frustration out there against YouTube is sufficient that I almost can't imagine an effective alternative failing to spring up soon. <clears throat> I remember back in the uh, 2004 era, we had a great forum, the Free State Project did, and it had a lot of traffic, and it seemed as though after a while they started to try and restrict what you could post there a little bit. It wasn't too bad. They didn't want you actually organizing New Hampshire political activity on the Free State Project web forum. This resulted in uh, uh, Cat Canning setting up a thing called nhfree.com. It was called something else at the time. But uh, it took very little time to spin that up with a whole lot of activity. A bunch of people moving over there to talk more freely. I wish we were that nimble now and we could make these things happen so fast. But it is still a source of pride that the, the best solution I'm seeing for now is at least in New Hampshire, a New Hampshire-based operation, aimed at uh, providing something for the whole world. Maybe it won't be the one that reestablishes uh, the connection that, that, that the little journalist has with the world, but uh, at least they're trying. Meanwhile, the interim step that I've taken, as you may have noticed, is uh, that I, I'm taking most of my videos now, putting them not just on YouTube, but on Facebook directly and on uh, Metacafe directly. Facebook doesn't seem to track hits anymore for you or tell you how many hits you got. And they're a, an authoritarian island all their own. Metacafe censors videos regularly and forces you to submit your video for review before it will air sometimes taking three days to decide whether to put it through. On the other hand, if you leave a video on Metacafe for a long time, it's a little bit like the Free State Project Forum these days. Yeah, it may not get much, you know, interest at first, but over a long period of time, it can get hundreds or thousands of hits, you know, com comparable number of hits to what you would get on YouTube. So, uh, Steps are being taken and have been taken, but uh, uh, the important thing is that uh, we can beat this, maybe. <laughs> I'd uh, welcome your suggestions and comments in terms of what you think is the best way to keep our message of real freedom in front of the public. So you, you may have heard me uh, <laughs> 
uh, using the voice of a certain well-known historical figure. And, and uh, you know, uh, the months previous, making some complaints uh, about the global warming crowd, the scientific community, and so forth, and outlying the, the many uh, things that would have to be sort of proven or steps taken before it would become sort of acceptable for the government to intervene and try to reduce global warming. <laughs> YouTube, of course, inserted its own uh, propaganda into the into my video description, or at least into the area between uh, the video and the video description. They apparently know exactly how everything is and exactly what everyone should do. But uh, despite whatever concerns we might have about process or information or scientists or leftists or environmentalists, it doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong about the science. And maybe it should fall on us freedom folk to be the ones who do the best when it comes to individual action against possible anthropological global warming, man-made uh, heating. I've made a point of hearing these people out, and th th though there may be probably nothing they can ever say to make it suddenly ethical to use taxation and government force to deputize the whole population into fixing a possibly severe problem. That doesn't mean I'm not with them when it comes to conservation. You know, because it doesn't do the world any harm if I drive less. It doesn't do the world any harm if I take a Navy shower. I'm doing both of those things, and I, I try to even hand wash most of my clothes now, uh, partly using the hot water that the, that the uh, shower generates. I think that's the kind of example we would have really appreciated from our scientific community and our politicians if they had lived that way over the last 10 or 20 years and urged us to follow their lead instead of flying around in Lear jets, landing, then telling us not to own SUVs. Maybe we'd have made a lot more progress uh, against any uh, real threat that's going on in the environment. I can certainly uh, sympathize, though, with the, the frustrations of these people who are sort of my enemies politically. I can sympathize with their frustration that, that people just don't care. So many don't, and so many make uh, no effort to limit their potentially negative impact on the air, the ground, the everything. It's like they just stop caring about their grandkids when it comes to the question of how much energy to spew out. Or maybe they legitimately disbelieve the global warmer claims. And one can, un one can sure see why they would, considering all the uh, suppression of ideas and uh, political misbehavior of the global warming crowd. Let's be better than them. So I know someone who is all verklept, so to speak, over Israel. Which is a, another way of saying they are sympathizers uh, with the Israeli government. And it's difficult to debate with them because it's hard to propose nice clean solutions for the uh, conflict in that area. There seems to be no major faction that is pro-freedom and uh, no place that you can draw a border without harming or endangering people, who in many cases are only guilty of having been born where they are and what they are. But if you, if, if, if instead of trying to tackle the grand problem with a grand or even simple solution, you take a page from nature and start with the small. Building on that, it gets easier. Nature teaches us through its creations that order, grandness, and beauty 
can come from the tiny interactions of emergent behavior. So, for example, a flock of birds uh, looks like it looks and is beautiful just because each bird is trying to stay about a meter away from the bird next to them or something like that. Or an evergreen becomes what it is just because of each cell doing its own thing in connection with the cell next to it. In the, so, in the same way, so many of our problems in the world are better addressed not at the mouth, but at the source. So, for example, with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, one of the most vexatious and difficult to imagine a solution for, I like to say the first step that should probably be taken is for the uh, Israeli government uh, to stop... Uh, no, wait, back up. That sounds too big. We're supposed to be talking small here. So the, the thing for each Palestinian and each Israeli to do they want to have a constructive effect on the situation is stop committing acts of aggression against well anyone everyone the way you do that as an Israeli is you stop paying taxes to the Israeli government and if you're a Palestinian you stop paying taxes to the PA that way you're not funding uh, the things that those uh, uh, organizations do uh, to harm bystanders uh, on the other side I mean, obviously, Israelis tend to do, do a lot of stuff that, that harms, you know, Palestinian bystanders. But, uh, of course, the Israeli government does plenty of stuff that harms Israeli citizens, too. Taxing them a lot would be one good example. If you pay your taxes, you're helping them hurt people. If you stop paying your taxes, you're not helping them hurt people anymore. You're just doing the one simple thing. You're staying... You're kind of like the bird that's staying a meter away from the bird in front of it. You're just doing one small part of something which, if more and more people did it, would become an emergent behavior. If large numbers of people in that area refuse to pay uh, taxes to their respective bad governments, well, that would force changes in those governments' behavior. We don't know exactly what the em in end emergent behavior would look like, but it would probably be better than what we have now. In the same way in New Hampshire where the problems are much simpler, we can each oppose each government act of aggression that we come across or each act of uh, criminal aggression, you know, by, uh, by uh, pirates, of which we have few, in whatever ways we, uh, we're able to. Roughly 15 years of roughly 1,500 people doing this has not created a utopia, but it certainly hasn't caused New Hampshire to come uh, to become more dystopian. What's the piece of emergent behavior that you can engage in today that will help lead us toward a more peaceable and tolerant society ten years from now? What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details visit freekeen.com